dust up. To late night sewing that gave way to early morning smiles. Whenever we needed you, you were always there. We just wanted to say Happy Mother's Day to the best mom ever. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. How are you doing this morning? You doing all right? All right. Stand to your feet, if you will, and find somebody. Find a mother or a lady and wish them a happy Mother's Day today, and then we're just going to get right into giving him praise today in this house. Hallelujah.
Good morning. And isn't he glorious today? I said, isn't he glorious today? Amen. You may be seated today in the presence of the Lord. It's so good to have each of you here today on this Mother Day uh, that we celebrate those who are godly mothers that are training up the children in the way that they should go. And in a time and an hour whenever the uh, family unit is being attacked so drastically by the world system, we desperately need godly mothers and fathers in the house training up children the way that they should go. Amen? Praise God. And we thank God for our mothers today for leading the way in that. Amen. In just a few moments, uh, Renee will be coming and sharing the Mother's Day message with you. And we had a great time in first service, and I'm certain that we will here in second service as well. Next Sunday, we'll be celebrating uh, graduates, those who have graduated from high school as well as college. And we uh, believe in putting an emphasis on college and continuing education. And uh, so we, we are thankful that we have several of those who have graduated high school as well as college in uh, this season. And uh, we're going to be celebrating them on next Sunday morning. Amen. And so uh, we thank God for them. And uh, I just believe that you ought to always continue to push yourself to learn more and know more. And it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to pick up and go to college. But you ought to challenge yourself by reading and preparing. Because the moment that you choose to quit learning is the moment that you choose to fall behind. Amen. Because this world is continuing to change and change. And we have to keep up. Right? Amen. Amen. All right. And then uh, also a couple of other announcements. They're all in your bulletin, by the way. I, I trust that you use these and get these and, and take them home with you. But next, uh, on the 20th of May, we'll be having our Dream Team meeting. It's going to be an, a very important meeting, an informational meeting. And, and so I encourage you to be here if you're in the Dream Team or would like to be on the Dream Team. Uh, it's going to be a time uh, a, a man from Indianapolis will be our guest speaker on that night. We'll not be having regular worship service on that night. We'll be having our Dream Team. And so it's going to be a great time. Also, on May the 28th, 29th, and 30th, the men will be going to Shanklin's Ferry. And we're going to be uh, doing some fishing and, and all kinds of fun while we're there. We're going to be eating and uh, going to be eating some fish and eating some steak and eating some other stuff. And we're just going to eat and have fun. All right? And uh, so, and yeah, and, and we're going to be catching some fish. And if we don't catch some fish, then we'll have to eat something else. And so uh, be sure to sign up back there so we know how much steak to bring and all of that good stuff. And, uh, you know, there, uh, I've noticed that uh, some folk have, uh, have an issue with signing up here at the tab. Amen. I told uh, the staff the other day that I'm convinced if I put out a, a sign back there that said sign up for heaven, that some of you wouldn't even sign up for that. Amen. But I encourage you to sign up just so we can have a number and so we can make sure that we're prepared, okay? And let's have a great time together and invest. Bring your, your, your sons or bring your uh, with you and invest in that and, and let's have a great time together as men as well, okay? Uh, today we're going to be honoring uh, our uh, sister churches pastors wives we have two uh churches that we have as sister churches gandyville uh, church and then also our church that is in uh, wheeling and uh, weirton area uh, we're going to be honoring them today with a special offering and so in your offering today what you give today will be given to these uh, two uh, ladies just to let them know that we appreciate their sacrifice and their commitment to the kingdom of God. 
because quite often uh, the pastor's wife, even though they go through everything that pastor does, they are, they are unnoticed and, and they do it behind the scenes and there's not much praise or celebration for them. And uh, we, we want to bless these ladies and let them know that the tabernacle values their commitment to the kingdom of God. Amen. And so uh, let's bless them today and just let them know that we appreciate their sacrifice and commitment. And uh, the church plant in, uh, there in Wheeling or Weirton area, uh, they've literally given everything that they have. They have uh, exhausted their resources. They've given everything that they have uh, lived or built up throughout their life. They've uh, cashed in their retirements and all of these things just so they can make that church happen. Amen. And I honor and respect people like that, that. That says, and I wish that would not happen, right? I wish that would not happen. But for somebody to go to that extent tells me that they really believe in the kingdom of God. So we should pour back into them and bless them today. Amen. Praise God. I have the greatest pastor's wife. And uh, I'm sorry for all the rest of the pastors, but I have the best. And uh, I love her and appreciate her today. Amen. And uh, she'll be coming in just a few minutes to share the word of the Lord with us. And uh, I just am so blessed to have her alongside and working in this kingdom work with me. And appreciate it so very much. Amen. I want us to give today as you've purposed in your hearts. Are you ready to give? Amen. All right. Oh, wow. Rick, it ain't going to take long. There's only four ready to give. So are you ready to give today? Amen. Amen. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, right? And so let's bless him today. Let me just also, as you are uh, preparing this morning, to remind you that our online giving is up again, and it is very secure and safe and we appreciate all of those as well that are giving online each and every week amen let's stand together and immediately following our uh, offering confession here this morning we'll be having a a video that celebrates the mothers here in the tabernacle so as soon as we pray today just uh, turn your attention to the screens and let's celebrate those ladies today are you ready father in the name of jesus we come into your presence thanking you for the tabernacle of praise. You have called us to take the gospel to this region and to the nations of the world. We are a growing body of believers and there is no division among us. Our church is prospering financially and we have more than enough to meet every situation. We are doers of the word and not hearers only. We lift our hands and worship you with these gifts as we give in an offering today. We are thanking you for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, finding money, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, it's offering time, and we are thankful for this opportunity to give. Hallelujah. Days will come when you don't have the strength. Not worth anything Wondering if you ever could be loved And if they truly saw your heart They'd see too much You're beautiful You're beautiful You are made for so much more than all
Father, we thank you today. Thank you that knowing, God, that one moment in your presence that can change everything. Thank you, Father, that your presence, we can find everything that we need. And then when we come out of your presence, God, that there's nothing missing and that there's nothing broken. That we've been in the arms of the Father and God, that you've loved us, that you surround us with your presence and with your love and your provision. So God, overwhelm us today. Overwhelm us with your presence, with your love. And amaze us today. Leave us astounded today in your presence as we celebrate those women that you have placed in our lives. God, that has made a difference in us, that we were able to lean back on them, lean back on their support and receive everything that we needed from the love of a mother and the love of our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. all for being with us at today's second service. Happy Mother's Day. We pray that with our worship today that we have somehow pleased the Heavenly Father. Amen. That like I said in His presence is going to leave us astounded. It's going to leave us amazed. And we can leave this place knowing that He is with us. Knowing that He has helped us. That He has healed us. That He has changed our lives today. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day ladies. Thank you all for being with us. Celebrating this special day with us. Um, we thank you so much for taking the time out and worshiping with us today. And first of all, I want to recognize the mother of your bishop, my mother-in-law, Sister Fran Matthews. Amen. We want to thank her for all her love, her sacrifice that she's made for the kingdom, and everything that she's done here at this local house, here at the Tabernacle, and just for uh, helping to nurture and make the man of God of this house the man that he is today. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And if you've been around her, she loves everybody. She just has the love of a mother. So we honor her today in this house. And also my mom, Cosby. She's sitting up front here. Amen. As all you mothers know, she has loved me through good and bad, right? Sometimes in spite of me, she has loved me and has always let me be myself and shine. So I thank you for that today also. So happy Mother's Day to you. Also, ladies, thank you. We had a great time yesterday at our Denim and Diamonds dinner. We survived some crazy elements and some crazy things that happened yesterday, but we had a great time. And uh, we, uh, had a, we learned to that life is like a good pair of great fitting jeans. That was our denim part of the service yesterday. And it's hard to find and God knows we'd like to have a magic pair of jeans like that, right? But today we, and also we learned how he has created us to shine. But today I'm gonna to focus on the diamond part of the denim and diamond series that we did yesterday and on going from dust to diamonds and how we were created to shine. He has created us to shine. I always begin by letting you know that um, I usually speak on things that I know about like diamonds and have some general knowledge of. I just know that I like them, right? And I want them. That's enough. That's all we need to know. Or things that I have learned from, from some of my greatest teachers, which are my kids. I don't know about you, but I learn a lot of lessons from my own kids, right? And if you have a son like Jordan who likes to preach back at you and tell you everything that you've told them and tried to speak into them and then they preach back at you, right? So we have the, we, there are those kids that do that. They like to preach back at you. But I've learned some of my greatest life's lessons from my kids. Or maybe it's just that when we become mothers, we realize our, uh, our own humanity. That we are all a diamond in the rough. That we're all going through a process. And when we do have kids, it usually makes us look at where we've came from, where we've been, our childhood, the soundtrack of our lives, and the lessons that we learned along our journey, too. And we try to use those life lessons to help teach them. Now, they don't always listen, right? They think that we've never done anything, been anywhere, or had anything go wrong. But we have learned a few things, and we could help them if they would only listen. But we've learned a lot of things from our own childhood and the journey that we had. But first, let's take a look at some of the important lessons in life that we've all learned along the way. 
We have learned through the years that, number one, that every kiss begins with K. Right? That's a great lesson to learn, right? Guys, you young fellows, you better start learning this real soon. Every kiss begins with K. Or the joy we find when we realize that he really did go to Jared. Right? That would be a nice gift. Or guys, if you didn't know it yet, that diamonds are a girl's best friend. You think you are. You think her best girlfriend is her best friend. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Or as the worldly psalmist Rihanna sang to us a few years ago, that we are to shine bright like a diamond. Right? We won't break out into a song today or anything. I don't have any dancers coming out of the side doors or anything, but that we're to shine bright like a diamond. And all of these life lessons have this in common, that yes, these moments are meant to encourage us and maybe help us to, to shine bright and to encourage us that, um, you know, that we're allowed as women to, to shine, to let our inner beauty come out. Or that because he went to Jared or that beautiful ring or that beautiful necklace actually came from Kay, it's a gift that usually represents some special moments in our lives, some special events like engagements or anniversaries or a celebration of a new life, moments that astound us and moments that amaze us and moments that we want to remember or, or mark by a special gift. So moments that have brought us to this point in our lives, this moment right now at Tabernacle of Praise on Mother's Day 2015. But in commercials, all you see is the happiness and the joy and sometimes the fake look of surprise on her face or that shining moment when she opens it up and sees what it really is. But what, what it doesn't show us is the moments and the process and the, point, the, place that, the process that it has taken to get to that point, what it was like to get to that happiness, the things that they had to go through to achieve all that they had marking at that point. And that's where our journey will begin today. We find that we want to get to that moment in our lives where our lives do shine bright, where we can make a difference, where we can become who God created us to be and do what he has created us to do, and that is to shine. Ephesians 5 and 8 tells us to do just that, that we are the light of the world and to walk in that calling and to walk as children of the light. And in Malachi 3 and 17, he publicly recognizes and openly declares us as his jewels. We are his prized possessions. We are his, and he is proud of us. Just like our kids. They could be the craziest bunch of kids you've ever seen. But we as mamas, we are proud of those kids, aren't we? And we can say stuff to them and say something bad about them. I've been to many of ball games, but you say something bad about, somebody else say something bad about your kid, you go off, don't you? You forget that you just sat up in Tabernacle of Praise on Sunday with your hands up declaring that God is good and then you want to go thump somebody on the ball field, right? We've all been there. But he's proud of us. We are his children and we are his prized possessions, just like our kids are ours. But we like diamonds. We don't begin shining. We don't begin sparkling. We don't come out glowing. Diamonds, they don't start out beautiful either. A diamond is just a carbon, is carbon in a concentrated form, dust really, just pieces of dust, essentially the same thing as maybe a piece of coal. And just like Adam came from the dust of the earth, so does this diamond. It comes from very far beneath. Yet when a diamond is mined, cut, and polished, it becomes the most precious gemstone in the world. They are formed hundreds of miles beneath the earth's surface, but when subjected to extreme pressure, to extreme temperatures, they are pushed to the surface. They are forced to the surface to become, to start the process of what they are meant to be. The conditions of this high pressure and temperature must be ideal for carbon to form a diamond, but slightly less than this, and they end up, it just ends up to be graphite. It just ends up to be powder instead of that extremely hard, clear, beautiful crystal that we know as a diamond. It is the hardest known mineral to man. It is also so hard that it can only be scratched by another diamond. So I think that's a sign that we should at least, all of us should at least have owned two diamonds, right? Just to test it out to make sure they're real. 
As we allow Christ to mold us, we will have his, his diamond hard strength to withstand the pressures of life and not be easily scratched, wounded, or scarred by the words or deeds of others. Amen? So do we want to go through the process of becoming a diamond or settle for just being graphite, for just being dust, for just remaining underneath the surface and not come into the fruit, full knowledge and come into the full ability that God has placed in us to be who he has created us to be? Once that diamond does come from the surface and before they can become beautiful jewels, they have to be cut and polished by hand or by a machine using steel or a diamond blade or a laser. It is then polished by a rotating wheel coated with an abrasive diamond powder so it's sharp, it's messy, you get dirty. It's, it's, a, it's a long process that it goes through and you have to be very meticulous so you, you can't chisel out the wrong end or the wrong side. So they're very hard, so it gets messy, just like our lives do sometimes. Sometimes it gets so messy that we think that nothing good can come out of it, right? But out of it, we can come out shining. We can come out as that beautiful diamond. And like that diamond, God's purpose is to refine us and to perfect us. Not to be perfect, not to be arrogant. But as long as we are trying, as long as we are making the effort, just like with our kids, when they're at school and if they're at least trying to study, if they're at least trying to hit that home run out of, you know, hit it out of the park, if they're at least trying, we're happy with that, right? If we know that they're drawing their best, and God's the same way with us. He wants to perfect us, but as long as we're trying, he's happy with that. As long as we're trying to get closer to him, as long as we're trying to do better, he's happy with that, and he's trying to perfect us in all things. A diamond's worth and beauty are judged according to the four C's. Cut, clarity, carrot, and color. Now the cut, the more we come under the sharp edge of God's word and allow it to shape us, the more valuable we will be for the kingdom. He desires for us to be transparent, for us to be flawless and true. Right? We don't want to be the fake one. We want to be true. And we want, not that, like we said before, not to be perfect, but to be flawless, but, but to come into his presence with an open heart, to come into his presence with willing to do what it is that he's called us to do. So that was the cut. Now we look at clarity. Like flawless diamonds, we must reflect and disperse light because like we said earlier, we are the light of the world. What would be the use of having that light in us, having Jesus in us, having his presence in us, if we don't let it shine out of us to a dark world, right? There are people who need the light that is in you. So that use that gift that is in you to come out and shine so that others can know his love like you do. So we are the light of the world. Carrot and color. God's diamonds will be judged not by the color or roughness of the exterior, but by the content and quality of the interior, the recepts of our heart. The intents of our heart is what's important, right? It's known by the character. We're known by our character. We're known by if we say we're going to do something, we do it, right? If we say we're going to be at the house of the Lord on Sunday, we're there. If we tell our kids we're going to take them here or take them there, we're going to do that, if, if all possible. So it's by the character. It's the intents of the heart. And this character is developed, not inherited, right? Aren't there things that... Uh, maybe kids get your kids get from you that's inherited, but there's also things that they get from your character, right? Some of the your little isms, the sisms, or some of your characteristics they get from you. They, it's learned traits, right? But some things are also inherited. It only comes through the refining process, and this process will shape us. It will refine us from being just a piece of dust to becoming that precious jewel. He tells us in Isaiah 43 and 4, you are precious in my eyes and I love you. He loves us. I think it's such a simple phrase and it's probably overused so many times, but just those three words, I love you, and that, that changes everything. Just to know the love of the Father will change everything. And thousands of years ago, David, he was astounded 
he was astonished and he marveled at this idea that God had set such a high price on the value of his people. So in Psalms, David wrote, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you would visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. He shared that glory and that honor with us. Just like we want to do that with our kids, right? We always want maybe for them to go the next step or go a little bit further than what we did. We want them to receive the glory and honor that we have. And so many times people are proud of their last name. The last name, you know, the, or the, the first name that you give a kid is to mean something. It's to share your glory and your honor with your kids, just like the Heavenly Father loves us enough to do that, that he placed us and put such value on our lives, and we are valuable to him. Then in Proverbs 3 and 10, he tells us how valuable his daughters are, his jewels are to him. He says, a capable, intelligent, and virtuous woman, who can find her? She is far more precious than jewels, and her value is far above rubies or pearls. Now, we as women, we can appreciate a fine piece of jewelry, right? We would like to have a fine piece of jewelry, so there's still time. It's, Mother's Day isn't over yet, guys, so especially today being Mother's Day, let's try to make that happen, right? And to be compared as jewels such as rubies or pearls, that, that's quite a compliment. Now, this is how your pastor tried to uh, encourage me to marry him 25 years ago, and he's shared this on, on a few occasions. He always told me, and he thought this was always going to, like, you know, make me just jump on the bandwagon and run right up the aisle and get married. But he would say, now, if you stick with me, one day you'll be wearing generic rubies. I'm like, wow, that's an offer I can't refuse, Right? That's one way to get a woman, guys. So what an offer that was. It, it worked, because we've been together 25 years, but finally 10 years after that, approximately 10 years after that, for Christmas he actually bought me a ruby ring and a ruby bracelet. So he made good on his offer. Now to this day, I'm not sure if it's generic or real. I've never had it tested, which you know I might need to do that at some point. But he made good on his offer, and I guess that's important. It goes back to the character thing of the diamond, right? Yeah. So there are many generic and there are counterfeit diamonds out there. And men can make imitation diamonds. There are the, the generic ones. There are the imitation ones. And these often look so very much like the real thing that it's difficult for them to, for them to even be able to tell the, one from another. And then God sometimes makes stones that appear like diamonds that one can't tell the difference between them. I mean, we have fake diamonds. Um, we have all that. And then, what, back the 1800s, they'd run to California looking for gold, thinking it was the real stuff, and it ended up being fool's gold, right? So there's always a counterfeit for the original. There's always a generic for the real thing, right? So sometimes even, even the merchants who buying and selling these jewels, these diamonds, they sometimes can't even tell that they're fake. Uh, a real diamond, like we said before, can't be scratched by anything else but another diamond. Another way is by putting it beside um, a true diamond and comparing them and to get, but yet it still takes a trained eye to do that. And if you put them in water, the real one or the fake one, the diamond will still look bright and shiny the counterfeit one, instead of shining, it will look dark and dull. Kind of like our lives sometimes, right? Put a little bit of water, a little bit of affliction, a little bit of issues on us, and we start getting a little fady and fading and get a little blurry. But his light will shine through us if we will just remain in his presence and let him astound us, right? Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want any of the fake stuff. Now, I know it's fine like this. And, you know, like this, to kind of dress up in costume jewelry and all that stuff. But when it's a, one of those moments that you want to remember, one of those moments that you want to mark in your life, you don't want to be buying the fake stuff. You don't want him bringing you home the fake stuff and just sticking it in a Jared or a K bag, right? He, you want the real thing. You don't want anything that's going to fall off or the setting falls off while you're eating dinner. You know, your diamond falls out in your food while you're eating. You don't want that. Or when you're, like, walking down the street and you think you're looking 
good. And what you don't realize, you've been sweating like we were at the ladies' banquet yesterday, and it turns green all the way around your neck, right? No fake stuff. If we want this to be like legitimate, good, you know, moments to remember, you don't want the green fake stuff wrapped around your neck, and you don't want your stones falling out of the settings and all that. No cubic zirconia for me. I want the real stuff. Now, of course, I have some fake things here, but that's just, you know, for advertisement, right? So sometimes it's fun to dress up in this costume, jewelry, and all that, but I want the real stuff. I want it to sparkle, I want it to shine, and I want it to be indestructible. Amen? And that's where the word diamond comes from. It comes from the Greek word, Greek word Adamus, which means indestructible. Romans 8 and 38 reiterates the fact that God's love for us is indestructible. It never ends and it cannot be broken. He says, For I am persuaded that neither life nor death nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present or things to come nor height or depth nor any cre creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, sometimes we do things that maybe try to separate us from his love, right? But there's nothing that we do that, that would separate his love for us. Nothing that we can do. So we like that diamond can be indestructible. We can be real and not fake. And if we're persuaded, if we make up our minds, if we settle it in our hearts that nothing, that no one, no circumstance, not your past, not your present, nothing can change the fact that he loves you. Right here, right now, where you are. His love, like that diamond, is indestructible, but it is lo his love is also unconditional, right? There's nothing that our kids could do that cause us to not love them, right? Nothing that they can do that would cause us to turn them away. And that's the way the love of the Father is. It's indestructible and it's unconditional. And just like the love we have for our kids, like the parents that are getting ready to dedicate their babies today, there is nothing we wouldn't do for them. Nothing would change that. And the same is true for him. He loves us so much and places so much value on us that it costs him dearly to buy our redemption, right? We just celebrated that in our Easter series all the sacrifices that he made. And I know many mothers are in here, and you make sacrifices daily for your children. But that was the ultimate sacrifice, wasn't it? It was the ultimate price to be paid. The purchase price was his son, Jesus. And if God places such a high value on us, we should realize and believe that he is who he says he is, and we are who he says we are. So many times we can tell ourselves things and other people can tell us things, but we have to believe what God says about us. We have to believe who he is and also who we are to him and in him. We are his chosen ones, his called out ones, and his redeemed because of what he did on the cross. He has a plan and a purpose for all of us and has since before we were even born. And in Philippians, he informs us, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So we were created to prosper and shine. I always tell people when I pray with them, you know, God, he does. He wants to provide. He is our provider. He wants to give you the things that you need. But we, like the Heavenly Father, and we as mothers and as fathers on the earth, earthly fathers, we want to not just give them the things that they need, but we will move heaven and earth to get them what they want, right? The desires of their heart. And God's like that too. He wants to give us the desires of our heart. He, every good and perfect thing comes from him. So we were created to not just live this life, but to prosper in this life and to shine. And we quote that, we quote that scripture so many times in instances like this when we're getting ready to do baby dedication or graduations like next week and those moments that we talked about at the beginning of the service and that we sang about about being astounded and being amazed those moments in our lives so as pastor jamie comes and the worship team comes let me leave you with this the process of going from dust to diamonds it can be costly like we talked about before too it can also be dusty it can also be time consuming it can also mean giving up one thing for another. And it can be expensive. 
Diamonds can be expensive, right? Judging on the size, like we talked about the cut, the size, the clarity, all that, depending on the quality of it too, it can be very expensive. But you are valuable to him. Your value is much more than any diamond on this earth that could ever be produced or be brought to the surface through the process. In 2013, a nearly 60 carat flawless pink diamond called the Pink Star was auctioned off by Sotheby's for a whopping $83.2 million. The most expensive diamond, it cannot even be valued. It's calculated to be approximately three and a half times the wealth of the whole world. That is one big diamond, right? These diamonds are incredibly valuable to man. And God has created many millions of diamonds. Not any two diamonds are the same, just like us. Not any, not any two of us are exactly the same. Our DNA isn't the same. Our fingerprints aren't the same. Our eyes, not the same. So just like these diamonds, not every diamond is the same. And he made only one you. You are unique and you are priceless to him. And you may be feeling pretty worthless right now, and the process, of the, the process of this thing we call life it has brought you to this point where you're not sure who you are, what, you're, what you are to Him, what you are in this world, what you are meant to do. You don't even feel as much as a rhinestone, let alone a diamond, right? We've all been there. But remember, you are precious to Him. So let Him invade your life. Let Him invade your life with His glory. Let him amaze you. Let him astound you with his love because he wants to do that. He wants to do that for us today. And let him take you from the dust and turn you into a diamond so that you can shine, so that you can do what you were created to do and follow the Heavenly Father. Amen. So as Pastor Jamie sings, Pastor Brian's coming also, let me encourage you. Just in these moments as we're worshiping right now, let him astound you. Let him amaze you with his love. Because as only the Heavenly Father can, he knows your heart like nobody else does. And he knows the needs that you have like nobody else does. We can even express those needs to others. But only the Heavenly Father knows the intents and the contents of your heart and the things that you need and the things that you would desire. So in this moment, be astounded. Be amazed at his love and go from a dust to be in that diamond that God created you to be. Stand with us today, please. You have great value. You have great worth. As Renee has said, at times in our life, it doesn't take much in this world to bring us down to feel inadequate, insufficient, less than. But God sees beyond the mess. He sees beyond the grind and he sees our hearts. And today, if you're in the middle of a mess, don't give up. Keep pressing through because God's got something of great value in mind for you. If you're here today and you haven't accepted Christ as your personal Savior, what a greater day than today to just go all in for God. Give Him your whole heart. Give Him your whole life. And say, I'm going to be all, do all, and accomplish all that He has purposed for me to do. As Jamie sings this morning, if you would like special prayer, if you would like to accept Christ, if you are in the middle of the mess, you would just like for us to join in prayer with you today. I want you to come and allow the Spirit of God to minister to you on this morning.
Aren't you thankful for a loving father? Amen. Amen. And that he put that love into mothers so that they can love us in spite of ourselves. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated for just a moment. I want to ask those who are getting ready or prepared to uh, dedicate their babies to the Lord um, to come at this time. Just come to the stage. This is one of my favorite times of the year to be able to uh, dedicate the babies. I'm not a politician, so I get to kiss them today. And, uh, but uh, anyhow, it's a, a privilege and an honor that you would allow Renee and I and this church to uh, bring your family before this body and just dedicate them back to the Lord. And we're honored for that today, and thank you. I just want to make a couple of acknowledgments or Today, baby's uh, dedication started, as you all know, I'm certain, that with Hannah. Hannah was a Jewish lady that desired a child, and she was unable to conceive, and she prayed this prayer here in 1 Samuel chapter 1. She prayed in the, for the Lord a child, and the Lord granted me what I ask him. So now I have given him to the Lord, for this for his whole life and he will be given over to the Lord and he worship the Lord there amen and so in this one scripture it gives us a a picture of his whole life because she prayed she received but then it tells us he worshiped the Lord where that he was dedicated back to the Lord even Mary had a moment where that the Bible says there in Luke chapter 2 and verse 22 that Mary took Jesus back to the temple to be dedicated to the Lord. And then in verse 40 in that same chapter it says this, And he grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. And so here today, you, you have brought your child to dedicate back to the Lord. And um, this morning, I just want to ask just a couple of questions of you. As parents dedicating your children to the Lord, do you represent, uh, present your child in dedication uh, to God's purpose today? And when uh, you, you realize that no one is perfect, as Renee has said this morning, but... 
will you uh, do your very best to raise your child to live a life of obedience and a godly uh, example and purpose before them right and then also the last one this is not um, all of uh, you know not gonna keep you here all day but just the commitment uh, when they're old enough will you work with them lead them and guide them to show them the way to Christ to dedicate their own life as they make that choice to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior amen church will you commit today to guiding and shaping these children by teaching them by godly examples the ways of God Mark chapter 10 and verse 16 it said let the little children come to me and do not forbid them and he took them in his arms and he laid in his hands on them and he blessed them so today I want to do just that the church if you will stand with me today and I want us to pray together as we bless these children but not only bless them but their families together this morning amen
just have a little certificate here for you to um, I do the wrong one. I'm sorry. That's the reason I've got my beautiful wife. I have a certificate for you to sign and uh, perhaps put in a uh, up somewhere to remind you of this commitment today and also a devotional uh, that you can uh, be able to read each and every day with the children. Okay? God bless you.